<laughs> so also tell us about your pipe bomb perfume project, which oh. is is set up in the basement. <clears throat> yeah, of the as a shanty. real estate broker or a real estate agent refers to it as the the bomb shelter. Um, I thought it would be cool to do revolution in the basement because that would be you know like underground. Um, and and since the PS One show, you know, however great it was, it just didn't feel like it got enough. I, or I didn't feel like enough people maybe saw it because it's sort of hard to go to PS1 and I thought it'd be a nice thing to do another sort of leg of the project. So we made um, this uh, guy, Gabriel Jeffrey, and a bunch of Craigslist actors and I uh, made this commercial, this revolution commercial. Um, so it's completely low budget, cheap commercial, but actually looks very high budget because we shot it with an HD camera. And then um, I made a vitrine to sort of display the Revolution Pipe Bomb uh, perfume bottle, which I made with um, participant as part of their fundraising um, additions and in conjunction with a jewelry designer called Yelena Barand, who has a studio down the road on, I think she's on Orchard too. She's on Orchard. She's, on Orchard. she's over closer to Houston. Um, so yeah, I conceived of the idea and, and Leah introduced me to, to Yelena and she does amazing work with precious metals and so she helped create the uh, perfume bottle which holds the vial of the fragrance that I made. And how did you create the stuff. fragrance? Uh, revolution is a smell of revolution based on 10 living revolutionaries recollection of what revolution smelled like. So these are people who either have written about revolution or been actually functioning in revolution um, or revolutionary activities. Um, some of the people are ex Weathermen, um, Black Panthers, uh, French philosophers. There's a lot of different people, but they all sort of wanted to remain anonymous. We sort of like it like that. Um, so the smell is of a combination of tear gas, blood, shit, urine, gasoline, burnt rubber, ash, smoke. Um, and it's something I created with a company called Simrise Perfume. Um, well, actually, just this year won an award for the most unusual or something fragrances. I think that's what it was, or some kind of like revolution. Not revolutionary, but like maybe creative fragrance. And this something. is a comment on the use of bourgeois, well, the bourgeois society's use of radical chic. I've heard commented about um, this particular project? I, well, I kind of like the idea of radical chic. I, I, I was reading a lot. When I started working on Revolution, I was reading a lot about the Black Panthers. And um, I can't remember whose book it is now It's because it was so long ago. But um, there's this great story. Darn, I wish I could remember the writer's name. He's a famous writer. Um, well, there's this great story about the Black Panthers being invited to this very wealthy woman's house. I think it was Leonard Cohen's or Leonard Bernstein's house. I can't, now I can't remember. I'm just getting too old to remember anything. Um, but the, 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 all these sort of collectors are hanging out or rich people are hanging out and the Black Panthers show up and I, I just love the idea that like people, I mean it seemed like mirrors the art world in a lot of ways, like inviting this sort of, you know, the artists to your, As, to your like house. Like the artists like are something spectacle. to collect, exactly. That's, so I just thought that idea was interesting and then this idea of like becoming like finding the, the Black Panther so stylish and that affecting fashion. And right. so I was also thinking about the Bush administration and how they're really encouraging us to shop and not have demonstrations. I mean, it, at some point during that whole thing, it became illegal to wear an anti-Bush t-shirt near the White House. You could actually be thrown in jail for that. Like there were designated areas for protests and that would be considered an act of protest. And so there were numerous things going on during that time where it just felt like, okay, well, if you can't have a revolution, why not? make this fragrance so you could buy it, wear it, and then maybe somehow have something to do with it. Well, there's a, there's this idea that's circulating about immaterial art and immaterial production and immaterial labor. And it's by an anthropologist named David Graeber. Mm. And I think this idea of smell of, of being art it's immaterial. Mm -hmm. It's like an idea. Mm -hmm. It's something you can't hold on to. You can barely own it. Well, it I sounds think like it's a just few people are making ingenious. fragrances now. I mean, I think that there's that show um, at Gagosian in Italy. Um, what's that artist's name? The Italian artist who made the Caligula video. 
Oh, of course. He just made a fragrance called Greed, and right. he actually made a commercial with um, Roman Polanski and right. like Natalie Portman's in it. And I'm like, well, mine's like yes. a low rent version of yes, the same. Yes, and the idea. original exactly. So, and like you know, Revolution versus Greed kind of makes sense. Right. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> but this whole idea of immaterial labor mm -hmm. and then also what you were saying about collectors inviting artists and the artists themselves being considered as something collectible by the collectors themselves. I mean, this idea has been around, but now it, you know, it, it, it can either be something that's exploited or it can be something that's been used like as a commentary like the idea is like value. problematized somehow and I mean, I mean maybe in a way the shanty functions the same way like we're here maybe I get to collect the collector by putting them in this context Absolutely. where it sort of subverts their authority in a way <laughs> that's brilliant and then also you know maybe and you know and I think there's also an act of generosity here I'm not trying to make fun of anybody or insult yeah, anybody's yeah. intelligence I, I think everybody's in on the joke um, well I also think that the beauty, the simplicity, and that there's no interest, and all of the conversation around how interest rates have gotten this country or, you know, many countries into so much trouble, and that here we can have real estate without these complicated interest formulas. There's a lot of jokes in this, actually. Like, I, I was, we made a video that's like a sort of interactive video that's on the internet that just kind of like narrated by an Englishman about the tour so it's like a virtual tour online and there's a lot of toilet jokes and water jokes on this piece like the because there's like the water supply is from the whatever polluted water from the sky and then there's this ridiculous wash basin and the toilet is a shithole like you stick your ass in a hole and it goes outside <clears throat> but but then I kind of like the idea of interest free too like so maybe there's no interest in doing something like this so it's so there, there's a couple funny little jokes that I didn't really recognize until now that I'm sort of living with the piece right. functioning in life. So there, I keep kind of noticing. And are you going to the Brooklyn Navy Yard? Or are you going to live in? in well, your... actually, you know, my boyfriend was saying last night that he really wants because we reserved a couple of weeks, and he you was did. saying okay, he really wants to have it for Fourth of July. He's like, we should really have it for Fourth of July and have a party there. So um, maybe we will. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Well, there we are. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Congratulations on your show. Thank you. Thank you.